Welcome to the Exam Room Podcast brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Hi, I'm the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. I'm really excited to be speaking with our next guests. They have a brand new book coming out called Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior. Love the title about it. It just portrays such strength, and it's something that I think a lot of us could use. And with that, we welcome Jan, Jane and Ann Esselstyn to the exam room. It is so good to see you both. Thank you so very much for making the time. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Excited to be here. Okay. Now, I think that in all honesty, I may have botched the intro that we had discussed. So I really want to sell the sizzle of the title of the book. So the name of the book is? Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior. Live fierce. Stay bold. Eat delicious. That is serious harmony. I mean, perfect harmony right there. I think you two may want to go right from this interview over to auditioning for American Idol. Pitch perfect. <laughs> so, thing. We'd much rather try to cook. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get into that. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, I'm even better at, at cutting bushes, which I'm just done, and I'm covered with bush she said, stuff and leaves wet. and bark. And yeah, I was like, wow, what are you doing? Oh, so you, oh, is that how you've been spending your morning out in the yard doing a little landscaping? Right. Yeah. We've been gone and everything's grown because <laughs> Cleveland is lush. Yes, it is. It's got, we have rain and we have reasonable weather. Well, if you feel like that's something that you love to do, I would love to offer you the opportunity to come and prune a few bushes in my front yard. Good Lord knows that they need it. Um, so let's talk about this book. Uh, I, I absolutely adore the title of it. So let me ask you this, uh, and what does it mean to be a plant-based woman warrior? I'm going to give that question to Jane. Jane, it's she, all yours. She, she initiated this, uh, the, I uh, didn't you, it was your, all your idea. The whole book was, is really Jane. Well, how can you have a next door neighbor and a mom like Anne and not write a book about how to be a plant-based woman warrior. I mean, every morning, my mom is my daily dose of hell. Yeah. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to be. I mean, she's cutting bushes all morning. I suppose this morning runs around, drags tires, does yoga with me, swims, runs, but you know, active, active, active energy all day long. And then you sit down at night to watch something with her and all of a sudden she just is like <sighs> finally falls asleep but um my whole point is um really that this is a tip of the, this book is a tip of the hat to my mom because she has been this plant-based woman warrior throughout i don't know almost four decades five coming on four plus decades did we lose you chuck are you still there Oh, I'm still here. I'm just uh, enthralled by what it is that you're saying. You know, I'm, I'm well, my an mom, inspiration. My so mom, far. and I'm going to tip it to her in a second, but my mom and dad in the 1980, early 80s, my dad started with going with this theory of, of how to approach his patients. He was a general surgeon, you know, thyroid down to the guts, but he also had had breast cancer patients. Anyway, he got going on how to prevent disease and came home with this, you know, let's not, let's stop eating meat and dairy and adding oil or salt and sugar and fat and all this stuff that seems to be different. So my mom was like, okay, we have four kids and I have a full-time job and you have a full-time job, but let's go. So she picked this up and ran with it when there was no, well, well actually <laughs> my husband took a little while for him to decide to start to do it, but then he decided. So I was the cook, so of course we were going to do it. Now we lived in Cleveland. Still um, do, still do. And we live in Cleveland still, but we lived in Cleveland then, and there was <clears> no <throat> internet. Uh, yes, people on the West Coast, like the McDougals, were were eating a little bit this way, and but California then was sort of like going to Europe. It was far away, and so we just had to start. We had to figure it out. And, you know, we did. I mean, we had been in Puerto Rico. My husband had been speaking there and loved the rice and beans. So that was a little place where we could start rice and beans. Believe it or not, we still, that is our favorite meal. That is our meal for guests, rice and beans with all the crazy, wonderful fixings. So 
I feel that we were actually lucky starting back then because anybody today oh. who is starting to eat plant-based is so tempted by the vegan junk food world out there, which in if somebody strictly eats that vegan junk food world food, they could be in bad a shape as if they were still eating the American standard diet. So I mean, we're very I, thankful for it because of all the animals and, and well, the ethics that are that are involved in not eating meat. But from our angle of nutrition of and health, growth, yeah, it's not a lot. It is, it is kind of a, a delicate balance. I mean, obviously there is far more good that comes with eating the meat alternatives than the actual meat itself. But as you pointed out, um, there- Ingredients in something like beyond beef, meat. Um, the, I mean, it's coconut oil. It's three kinds of oil. It is processed food. But again, it's great for the planet. And it's good it's for the animals, great for good the, for the planet, for but it's not necessary. good for your body. You need to eat clean you need to eat whole food plant-based yeah that's a it is kind of a, a fine line uh, for a lot of people i think that um what i discovered when i was first making that transition over to eating a plant-based diet just as uh, you said many years ago didn't really know what you were doing but you figured it out um, those types of foods were available to me so i used them for a time and then transitioned over into the whole food plant-based realm uh, where things actually I found are far more flavorful anyway uh, and certainly um, healthier as you said so Don't um, you, you find Chuck that your taste changed enormously uh, just totally you uh, to us now salty food is not is awful yeah. the, they I mean, they've they, changed dramatically things can be way too sweet it's, it's hard to lose the interest in sweet but very sweet is no longer is just a no no. Yeah. And oil, oh, forget <laughs> it. <clears throat> so when you were putting the recipes together for this book, knowing just how much salt and fat and sugar are in the standard American diet, how cognizant were you of the palates of the vast majority of people as they're trying to convert over to this? How do you replicate kind of those flavors and and just kind of Letting people know like, hey, your food is still going to taste great, even if it's whole food plant based recipe. Well, this is this is my fifth cookbook project and my mom's third. So together we have, you know, eight plus cookbooks and we're not trying to fool anybody. Like we're not trying to make that bliss point um, just like crazy addictive level of um, flavor and texture and mouthfeel. Uh, Doug Lyle once said when he had a bite of our cake, he's like, this is a really reasonable cake. And I was like, that's a really weird way to modify <laughs> a, a bite of cake. And he's like, no, it's good. I want to finish my piece, but I'm not going to want more, which is really reasonable when you want to have cake. Like, it's scary to have cake that tastes so good. That you're like, ah, and you eat the whole thing. So, um, but uh, Chuck, can I go back to why this is a plant-based woman warrior book? Of course, I would love to. There were, there's three points about it that I wanted to bring up. And I know you asked my mom um, about why. And so, again, this is a tip of the hat to her and and who she is, what she is, how she is, what she's made of, just her tenacity and her just amazing can do it can do it can do it -iveness. I can't. That, know how that's a word. It. If it's not, it is now. Um, and then also. I want to just call out that globally, not necessarily in America, not necessarily in every household, but globally, women are primarily the ones in charge of growing or gathering or shopping or, or thinking about doing the mental labor and then also the prep preparation, sort of physical labor of creating food, serving food and giving food to themselves, their family, their community. And so I really am calling out to all women but the majority of us who are out there and any and then this is for anybody however you identify non-binary bring it on anybody please be fierce and be bold and you can be delicious eating a plant-based diet for all the reasons we've kind of touched on already chuck you know the environment animals our health our pocketbook uh, any way you want to look at it it makes sense and also I know you haven't really asked about this yet but this is the exam room so i'm going to go right into something sort of <clears throat> uh below the belt ish but um for women and i could Jane is very good below the belt 
Well, because I'm a middle school sex ed teacher sometimes. Okay. okay. Part, part, part time, when I'm not doing cookbooks and I did a little research with the Cleveland Clinic and, a, you know, presentations and all this stuff, teach middle school sex ed. I mean, I have for 30 years. But anyway, in talking to kids about stuff down there, I've realized, oh my gosh, adults need to know more about what's going on down there. And I realized there's not a lot of research or information specifically for women even about what's going on down there. So women, obviously, um, I want to start above the belt. And and uh, Dr. Christy Funk is amazing in how she talks about breast, the owner's manual. Her her book, I don't know if you've had her on the exam room, but she is- Many times. What's that? Many, many times. There you go. There yeah. you go. You know what I'm talking about. She's just amazing about it. And her, like, I just, I, I have a- conference every March about uh, health for women or just women go for it to run the international day of the woman since she was my presenter. And it was one of my favorite presentations because she's just so like, yeah, you've got breasts. You've got to take care of them. Plants is the, are the best way. Eat this. Don't eat that. So clear. And um, so for more about that, obviously watch your podcast with Christy Funk or her book, breast, the owner's manual, but then below the belt is so interesting because Women are are women and men are are very much very similar. We're all made of the same Legos, if you will. Like men have nipples, women have nipples. <laughs> we do. Why? Hmm? Who knows? We have the same gear because you know what? Somewhere inside our bodies, we branch off, and then this tissue becomes this or that. So below the belt, we kind of have similar tissue too in many ways. Um, and so instead of going from, I, I'm going to go from um, front to back. So in the front. Women have 8,000 nerves for sexual pleasure, clitoris, clitoris, clit, whatever you want to call it. They have the hole then behind that called the urethra and the hole behind that called the vagina and the hole behind that called the anus. So in my middle school sex ed classroom, I have this term I use called CUVA, C-U-V-A. And CUVA represents just the, the order of events in the, in the female's body below the belt. You couldn't find it? I couldn't find it. Oh, it's in my, it's right Okay. Um, anyway, I, I have a Chuck. I'm going to have to just get at the end of the podcast, but anyway, it's a t-shirt. It says Cuva, C-U-V-A. Everyone thinks it's like Cleveland United Vegetarian Association or something. Um, anyway, so the way that a plant-based diet can benefit women below the belt needs to be talked about because women suffer silently through so much and I had, I had a great, there was a doctor one time in the audience when I was presenting and she just said, we don't need to put up with this. And I was like, oh, she doesn't like my presentation. She doesn't want to hear anymore. And she's just like, we need to arm together and just take this on. We do not need to suffer all these things that are going on down below the belt. And I was like, oh, phew, she's, a, she, she's on board. Because what's happening, let's start with the A of Kuva. A, the anus. Um, if ugh, On a standard American diet, I know you've probably talked about this with many people, um, obviously, a, uh, constipation is not an issue and all this high fiber diet, boom, we are just like, you know, as regular as regular can be. It's a moving experience being on a plant-based diet. <laughs> so, so things that that's not an issue. And so many Americans, I mean, bazillion of us have deal with constipation and then others of us don't. And we don't, we just, it's, you know, numerous times a day we go to the bathroom number two. So if that's not an issue, then you're not going to have diverticulitis. Diverticulitis is the outpouching from pushing too hard and trying to go number two. People think it's from seeds and corn. It's because you didn't eat enough seeds and corn um, to have all that high fiber flow. And thus, you're not going to have hemorrhoids, which are kind of like a bundle of grapes of veins just have been pressed out from pressure um, out of the, the anus itself. So hooray, taking care of the A. The V, the vagina, the vaginal space is... I mean, the vagina is, it's a space, it's a tube, it's a lobby. The middle school kids love, the boys especially, like, hey, I'll be a bellhop, I'll meet you in the lobby. Oh my um, God. <laughs> and that's hilarious, it's hilarious. So, so the, the, the vaginal space benefits tremendously because um, it, it, it gets so much blood flow as, all, as, our brain, as our head and our privates get tons of blood flow, as you know. Um, and that blood flow is there for a lot, many good reasons. And I'm going to get to that in a second, but above it is the cervix and the endometrial lining, which is the lining inside the uterus and the ovaries we all benefit from a whole food plant-based diet. And again, I've, we have so many resources to look at it through here and Neil's book, um, 
hor uh, uh, what's Neil's hormone book? Your Body and Balance. Your Body and Balance. Yes. I refer to him. I used to say, if you want more, please see this book because he has many um, examples of patients who he talks about who had issues with fibroids. And we have a friend also who she just had gotten married 20, early 20s. And she had was so anemic from her fibroids, she was going to have to have a hysterectomy. And she just got married. But oddly, luckily, her father had a heart attack, went on the, a plant perfect diet and found my dad's book. And she was eating with them as she was getting ready to be married or however the timing worked. But suddenly she didn't have to get a hysterectomy because she got pregnant. <laughs> wow. So I wanted them to name I wanted them to name their child uh, Fib, short for fibroid and for the Fib that you need to have a hysterectomy to stop being anemic <laughs> when you just ask to stop eating cheese. So your, your endometrial lining stops making these stalactites of tissue that just drip blood. So that was wonderful. And um, also uh, women who are women have some great changes that happen in, throughout their life coming into being a fertile person and going out of being a fertile person and the hormones drive that and going through puberty you know a plant-based diet can help anyone and for kids you know they kind of have to have a, maybe more calories than us like avocado based stuff the nuts but not the dairy keep kids off the dairy and the meat it'll help their the hormone swings their skin issues um i don't i can't imagine that evolution really had acne and, and, you know, as part of the plan. Um, but anyway, and the same on the other side, menopause, we have a friend who went through such extreme hot flashes that they hurt. She was in pain and she, she couldn't sleep. She was in such pain. It was horrible. Again, her husband had a bad heart test. They went on a plant-based diet and she said, I didn't have hot flashes that night. I thought it was a fluke. Then the next night I didn't have hot flashes. And I realized, oh my gosh, this is from being on a plant-based diet. I want to sing from the mountains. I want to be louder about this than I am about climate change. Than I am about literature. She's like, this is the issue that everyone needs to know about. Anyway, so um, it's amazing how it can help in all these things. I don't, don't just have friend testimonies. We have testimonies from many, many people. Um, but the urethra, you're, you know, going off ahead of the C A and U the B. V. No, A, U. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, we're, going, sure. we're going backwards. Backward. We did the anus, we did the vagina, now we're in the urethra. The urethra benefits everything above, your kidneys, your ureters, everything, your bladder. Um, and uh, Dr. Michael um, McGregor. McGreg Michael Gregor has a great research about how our bladders benefit from a plant-based diet, but also that if people who consume chicken tend to have some sort of antibiotic resistant bacteria that gets in there and then it just sort of sets up camp and all these UTIs, urinary tract infections can become issues even after you've cleaned up and even after you've eaten it, it stays around your whole environment, which is so gross to think about. And I can't help but think about if you're muckling, you know, smoochy smoochy with somebody who eats chicken and has that reservoir bacteria, you might get it from him, her, they, them, you know, you just, you don't, you don't know and can't get rid of it. Anyway, um, so stay off of that, but then the C, the clitoris, the clitoris, the clit up there in front, it's the exact same tissue as the head of the penis. Like the head of the penis is a different tissue than the rest of the shaft. It's, um, it's the glands G L A N S and the clitoris is the same tissue. So there's a little bit of engorgement that happens when someone's aroused. And that comes from the endometrial endothelial cells that are in there and respond by dilating with like my, it's my dad's research is all about endothelial cells and how they dilate when they're healthy enough and don't haven't been covered in grease and meat and cheese. But what is the most fascinating, Chuck, you still with me? I'm right here. I'm just enthralled. I'm, I'm letting you go. So keep on, you're on a roll. Okay. So the tissue in the shaft of the penis, remember how I said that women and men have the same Lego pieces? Of course, pieces? of course. Women have that tissue. So the glands of the, of the penis, the head of the penis, and then the shaft is in the man, the head of the, the, clitor the clitoris is the same tissue as the glands, but the tissue, the corpus cavernosa in a woman is right along the, I wish I had my t-shirt, my CUVA, but it's it's in the pelvic floor. And so these two, sh these two sections that are usually in a man's penis, um, or not usually, that can be found there, are found in the, the pelvic floor of the woman. And when she's aroused, um, they are sort of like these great uh, arms or wings that, that go up from the clitoris. They're called the crura. Um, and they go up around the, the vaginal space and they hug the vaginal space like a hippie hugging a tree. And that blood flow 
during engorgement lets the pla like plasma um, sort of come into the vaginal space and then mix with lady chemicals, that's lubrication. So a woman's sign of readiness is lubrication. A man's sign for readiness is an erection. Both of those are what you need to have those happen are blood flow. And good blood flow means you don't have little tiny capillaries that are clogged up with grease, meat, and cheese. They're wide open with healthy things like plants and all that good stuff. So the side view of a female, front to back, C-U-V-A, Kuva, 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 is a really important thing to know about as far as how women can benefit from eating plants, head to toe, left to right, front to back. Man. In case Jane went too fast, there's a lovely section in the book. It doesn't, it's a Kuva's not there. Oh, it's not? That's not Kuva. Oh, <laughs> no, no, but we have, sorry, we have breasts and we have the front view of the female anatomy, which I think is the the wrong view to give anyone who's trying to be educated about how women work. We need to do a side view front to back because a penis does three things for a man. What does it do? Jane, don't ask me that. <laughs> you are the expert. You know what penis you, does. I, you've taught me everything I, about well, all you, of this. Oh, stop. It does urinate. You know. Yes. Your urinate. I'm not going to speak about it. Why not? I don't know. She, urination, reproduction, sexual pleasure. A penis does it. Everyone knows it from oh, the beginning. I knew that. <laughs> this is the greatest interview no, in the no, history of the exam room. No. The, so females' bodies, no one talks about how they, you have a different section. It's like we're jackknife versus a cleaver. I mean, I, t I ask the boys in my middle school classes sometimes. Am I getting carried away? Sorry. Is that a little? Sorry. I ask <laughs> the mean. boys. I asked the boys, I'm like, Chuck hey, where, 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 where do you guys pee from? They're like, penis. I'm like, where will you one day your uh, reproduce from? Penis. Um, where do you, where, we, you know, do, where the sexual pleasure come from? Penis. If I asked them, where do you poop from? They would say penis because they love this unit. They love what it can do. Whereas females are not like that with just, you know, the same thing, same answer. They're just divided and specialized. Urination, you're, you're, you know, your urethra. Reproduction and, you know, their menses. Vaginal space, sexual pleasure, clitoris up here in front. You were designed to have pleasure. Women actually have a few more nerves than men. And then anus, where everyone has one. Anyway, I'm getting carried Jane, away. But Jane Kuva, has this, this Kova t shirt, which I was unable to find. I'm going to run and get it. It's kind of fun. By all means. And, 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 and what? Are you, you're going to go right now? Well, no. If his next question is for you, I'm going to. Well, I, I, I'm, I wanted to go back to something because Jane jumped in before I could say this. Okay. And you had asked about when we were cooking, if we were thinking of the salt and sugar, et cetera, and how people would like to eat. And I, frankly, I have learned because of working with my husband's patients that, and, and you see, he gets, he gets a sort of a sub group that really is, uh, really has to eat plant, perfect they can't go they can't stray away because they they recall and they say they're slated to have triple bypass but they don't want to have it they aren't ha they're they're have stable angina so they can do plant they can do plant-based but they have to stick on the track so i think of the patients when i am working on recipes like that that's my, where my thought is. Okay. And our book, and our, and our, and our book actually, our, oh. our editor who has written, has published, public, sorry, published all my husband's books. Well, his first book, she did all the recipes in, so it's their book. The next book they did was our Prevent Inverse Heart Disease cookbook, which was like a companion to that one with the same guidelines of no meat, no dairy, no added oil, no nuts, and no avocado. And um, so this book that we're doing with Penguin again, they said, hey, people are really used to you guys being this heart disease friendly group. And not all our recipes in here qualify because we do have some nuts we use here and there. And we do have avocado as an option in some things. So we have indicated at the top of each recipe if it's heart disease friendly or how to make it heart disease friendly or if it's not. And, and patients just need to be smart and know what what's right for them in their situation. So here, here is the thing. There it is. Kuba. 
Chuck, I, they will come in women and men's sizes. If you need a Kuva t-shirt, they're available on my website. Maybe we should just send you one. <laughs> I mean, I would be honored to wear one and, and proudly too. put that up on Instagram and link off to it uh, in the show description, in the episode notes. I think all of the exam roomies would flip for a Kuva t-shirt. Ch Chuck, there you go. can you say what Kuva is? Uh, I mean, I could, but I would blush. I'd turn pinker than yeah, this. Emma, okay, I, I don't know if you're a parent or if you have any females or women or nieces in your life or not daughters, but th you got to be able to talk about this. They need to, if from the start, we knew, I have three brothers. Come on, man. If from the start, we all knew what we, we were equals, it would be such a better playing field in so many ways. So, right. I mean, I, I do. I, I'm very happily married. I have a wonderful wife. The thing okay. is, you need to understand that myself and virtually every other male on the face of the earth, still, I don't care how old or how young we are, when we talk about these things, we revert back to, oh, I don't know, the boys in your middle school sex ed class. We we okay, are about we, on that level. You guys are all, my seventh graders, eighth graders, sixth graders, they're all so comfortable saying this stuff. So get your seventh grade self on, just channel your seventh grade Chuck, Chucky, whatever you were called. Chuck, yeah. <laughs> and you can say these words. No, you, can, you, can you, say, don't, you don't have to. You oh, don't have to. it's all right. It's all right. So, uh, all right. Uh, C is is that the? Uh, are, are we talking about the the big C word there? Is that what we're going with here? Clitoris. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> clitoris, urethra, vagina, and anus. Is that cool? You deserve a t-shirt. We're going to have to get your size at the end and we'll send you one. Outstanding. All right. I'm going to rep that one with pride and I'm going to put in all caps when I post that on Instagram, what each one of those stands for, you know? So we're going to say it loud and we're going to say it proud. Yes, yeah. we are. Yeah. Cool. And, and, and how a plant-based diet helps everything front to back. Right on, front to back. You thought this was going to be a an interview about recipes? No, a woman warrior is a woman warrior about lots of stuff. Like I'm taking care of my business. Oh yeah, y'all are trailblazing today. There's no doubt about that. We're going to talk food. We're we're talking a whole bunch of. Other... You know what I'm wondering? I, I'm wondering like, well, two things. One, is it possible to invent a time machine so I can become middle school Chuck again and take your sex ed class? Because mm -hmm. What you're saying beats the heck out of these boring overhead projector slides that they used to put up uh, for, for me and my classmates. But two, I'm wondering who gave you the talk about all of this. You, I mean, whoever did, I mean, they instilled a passion in you, the likes of which I have never seen. <laughs> well, uh, no, no that's one. Jane. No, that's this, Jane. That's this, why this book works. Well, this book is this book is actually a cookbook. But I, I take any chance I can to talk about Kuva. I've actually asked Neil if I can come and talk. <laughs> that is the um, the PCRM conference. They, one time it was about sexual health stuff. And I'm an RN and I don't have research about this specifically, but I do have plenty of t um, time in the classroom for 30 years. <laughs> like, which is like serious, you know, helmet time of being in there fight, fighting, you know, getting this stuff done. Um, but cookbook seems to be where I... Land. I mean, well, here's the deal. I mean, I will offer you all the time that you want on this show. We can even do a special live episode and just call it like Kuva time, right? No one and we will get thousands about. and thousands of people. No one will know what we're talking about, though. Not, in, I mean, they absolutely will. I mean, that's the, that's the whole point. Nobody knows what it is we're talking about until we take the time to explain it. And there, if you break down what Kuva is and like Aren't why it's okay, I'm just saying Right. Well, well, bring it on. Absolutely. Let's do it. And speaking of women. Yes. We knew that we were on the right track for this book, because at one point during COVID, when we were trying to, you know, shop and cook and think that the world was going to be OK, we said, OK, let's uh, let's count up what we have. Let's tally what, what we have going so far. And we had about you know seven or eight breakfasts, you know, nine or ten lunches. A good, a good nine or ten dinners, but we and how many desserts we had? Forty-four. Oh wow! But, how about that? But we knew we had a great book for women. We were like right on target. <laughs> we were really lucky because we got the okay for this book just as COVID began, so we had that whole COVID time to to really work on it. And I can remember uh, my. <laughs> 
my husband and I were, stayed very isolated. And at night we would often watch TV and I would hear the door rustle and my I would begin to salivate because I knew that Jane had another brownie recipe that she wanted us to try. It took 12 tries on one of those recipes on the one of her recipes the out of sight one right here we'll she hit the right brownie and so it was so much fun and we live next door to each other with this lovely little mm. tiny little path so it was fun just you know going back and forth with what do you think of this and they, oh would you let, let me take that full yes now that is a brownie my friends yeah no. that was a frosty what we've got oh there's so many yeah I would love to know what your process is for creating a recipe start to finish. So you say that you want to make a brownie, you want a new brownie recipe, where do you start? Well, you know, it's, it's, it, there's not one process. I mean, my mom really comes from, for so many decades, she's been coming from the heart disease patients. And, you know, she's been dealing with that since I was in college and, you know, I was, running around you know, kind of got married had kids so i have not been thinking about heart disease patients the whole time we do eat sort of similar guidelines with the exception of eating nuts and avocado here and there um and so the process she just is constantly creating stuff thinking about them i have having little kids i wanted to make like teriyaki tofu so it's kind of comes from our own lenses but also what's really great is that well people when people are really kind and decide to like have us over or bring have us try things um you know make a meal or whatever that is so inspiring and um you know we've had veggie burgers at friends house We're like what is this recipe and they use things we never would have used and so it's we have a bunch of people who are contributors or who have their how do you want to say it? Like their recipe came came to us for some, inspired us in, in certain ways. Yes, and then we tweak it so that it fits our guidelines. Um, uh, sometimes you get I get inspired by things I see here and there on social media, but I try not to really do that a lot because it's I don't know I don't like social media and it's, <laughs> and it's their stuff and I just you know you can we can plant strong things plant plant basify I mean, there's so many things we do to make it not have the oil, you know, not have any of the salt at all or, or minimal salt, change out the sweet and the or the agave for maple syrup. We're always yeah. tweaking things like that. Yeah, I love the creativity that comes with this. You have a great quote from uh, Sophie. Uh, I don't uh, Who is Sophie to you? Uh, niece, my granddaughter? My granddaughter, our son, Rep's daughter. Okay, my, so there's 20. Yeah, there's 20 of us. Sophie's quote, I thought, was brilliant for people who aren't yet eating this way. And for 11 years old, I was like, wow, Sophie's, Sophie just gets it, right? So that I've been lucky because uh, it's easy for me since I've been eating plant strong my whole life. Being plant-based does not mean just eating salads all of the time. It means so many fun and unique things like a kale cake with raspberry frosting, not just vanilla frosting with pink dye in it, but lemons and raspberries, and it's just really fun and tasty. And if that doesn't sum up what it means to eat a whole food plant-based diet, I don't know what does, to be honest with you. I mean, that is a 10-star quote right there. Yeah, that's, it's a great quote, and, and Sophie has carried on and continues to in, invent wonderful things. She's She must have been just about to be 12 when she wrote that, and she's now just 13. Mm -hmm. And she's great. And in fact, I mean, the amazing thing to me is that we have four children and uh, all of them are plant-based. All of their spouses are plant-based and all 10 of our grandchildren are plant-based. And I had the, well, one of my favorite parts of what I did in this book was to interview everybody to hear, to see it. And what that's they thought where, about being plant-based and that's where Sophie's comment came. And Georgie, who was eight, said, without being plant-based, I can't imagine how I'd live. The, I, I'd open the refrigerator and see things like chicken wrapped in plastic and just feel like, what happened? But then Zeb, Jane's son, who was six, seven, and at, at age 20. Poor guy said, never had any milk. Hmm. He said, <laughs> 
every box, not killing anything, great for the planet, not burdened by being sick. You feel good. It's the future. And they're all, all my kids are collegiate, then, collegiate swimmers, by the way. And then wow. Hope, who was seven, if you eat meat, you die. Woo, powerful stuff. But then all of them, they all had such wonderful comments. I, I love them. <laughs> I know you guys are like the, the first family of plant-based eating or plant strong uh, lifestyle even. And, and I think though that people will be shocked and, and you write about this in the book is that uh, the night before your wedding, uh, you had a, a goat roast where, and you talk about even putting the head of the goat on a stick during this roast and um i think that i i don't say that they're like in 50 they sorry well yes i mean i grew up with a, a fantastic fabulous maverick of a father and mother and and we used to go you know when it rained my father would get the snails off the driveway and call them escargot um we we uh we did underwater did underwater driving we ate turtles we if the roadkill goat, still goat, was goat warm. roast i mean it, if the roadkill was warm they would take it home but the most shocking thing to me and i still i i can't even believe it after we were married the first meal that i served to, to my husband's patient parents and to our wonderful and very distinguished landlords was beef tongue. Mm. Uh, it's Gross. beyond my comprehension today. But so you know what? Yeah. people can come a long way. You know that. Absolutely. You can come a long way. Absolutely. And all of that is as if it were another uh another time. Another planet. Another planet. <laughs> Another person. No, no doubt about it. You always have the power of change within you. I, I think that that's kind of been a, a universal theme for the exam room. And, and a lot of people eating a plant-based diet, it's like, I never thought I could do this. I never thought I could do this. And lo and behold, you're not just doing it, they're knocking, you know, home runs out of the park all the time with their health. It's just, it's so extraordinary. Um, and, and the simple, the solution just, it's, it's so simple a lot of the times. Um, I, I have a couple of more. You guys have been fantastic with your time here. I know that you're busy with, with the release of the book. Um, but a, a couple of more. Um, one of the things that I've also learned, especially since Dr. Barnard released Your Body in Balance and having the opportunity to speak with women who are featured in his book, is that it's not just the physical toll that a lot of these chronic illnesses take on them. It's also the emotional toll that comes with it, right? Why is this happening to me? Why am I being punished? I'm less than my friends. I'm less than members of my family. Mm. And it's, it's so sad. How do you feel in terms of knowing that the book that you are publishing, I, I mean, and with warrior in the title, right? I mean, that's so empowering. You really are giving these women the power back. They're taking back control of their life. That's got to be an amazing feeling. No, it's great, and I like how you how you sort of frame that because and and that that the the energy of um, Neil's or Dr. Barnard's patients has the same vibe because it is. My dad always says like this is truly putting patients as the locus of control, and if you have control and you have a sense of of not worry. Like I always say, like, I, I'm so grateful to, for being a plant-based woman warrior because I feel unburdened by so much. I mean, I, I don't know if you have how much you've read of our book, but I do go into a little section of how, like, I, again, I have three brothers and we all grew up as athletes and we all swam for our university. We were all nationally ranked swimmers. And so here I am like late teens, actually mid teens and Olympic trials and top ranked hunter backstroker in the nation, blah, 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 I, 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 you know, for this, you know, however many weeks, months, days it was. So I'm, you know, crazy fit. And so are all my brothers. They're all making nationals too. And I was so concerned and worried and thought a lot about how my body was getting curvy and filling out and what am I eating, but I kind of keep training and I'm, I was in Michigan on a scholarship, University of Michigan swimming on a scholarship. And, you know, I, I, how do I balance this? Like, 
I don't, I, my identity, but I need what I need to do and what I'm eating. It was such, I was so conflicted. And I, and you know, I don't know what American female is free of that. Um, but my brothers I knew had not spent an, a moment thinking about their identity and what they were eating and their shape. They were just beautifully in shape swimming men. Anyway, I went on a plant-based diet with my parents right at that time. They were shifting over when I was literally my freshman year at Michigan. And I know that saved me there. And if it hadn't been in that window, I don't know the toll it would have taken on me and my mind and my body. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so thankful because I have not felt burdened by my body, my weight, my, my health concerns, which our family is dripping with cancers and heart disease and diabetes and blah, blah, blah. But we kind of have halted that with our, I mean, knock on wood, with a plant-based diet. Like you said, it seems to help cure, you know, whatever, it's a panacea. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, there's never a 100% guarantee, but as we always say here on the show, it is the uh, the best prevention uh, that you could possibly ever ask for. It lowers the risk so dramatically for so many different diseases across the board, uh, male or female. I think that that is really empowering. So even though you're talking about uh, woman warriors here, I think that there's a lot that us men can get out of this as well. Absolutely. I put both men and women in the title. It's where it should be. You know, if this was but, a... If, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Jane. No, I forgot what I was going to say. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> well, you two need a reality show. Yeah. That's what needs to happen. No, I, I, I was going to say that if we had labeled this book, Be a Plant-Based Warrior, that doesn't have a gender to it, but Be a Plant-Based Man Warrior, Male Warrior, Be a Plant-Based Women. Anyway, I feel like modifying it with a gender, people are like, well, why women? Well, you know, otherwise everyone would have thought the book was, you know, maybe for men and women still would have purchased it. I've heard from plenty of men who've purchased our book, like, Hey, I'm a man, but I got it. And I'm like, great. No problem. You strong, beautiful, comfortable with yourself, male. That's awesome. And to tell you the truth, I don't say this, but I'm like, women would not have said, Hey, I'm a woman, but I bought this book for men. It's kind of expected that we would do that. You right. know? Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? So what that it's for women? Enjoy it, everybody, no matter how you identify. Man, cool. woman, this, them, he, sure, he, she. It, 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 going, it. going back to what you'd asked before, <clears throat> you know, one of the, the, the difficult things about going plant-based is that sometimes the only way that somebody does decide to go plant-based is when something unfortunate happens to them. And that is the impetus. And I don't know how we can go out there to the general population and give them that drive to make that switch yeah. because it's quite easy once you have something wrong and you know that this will help it but it is not so easy when you walk into a gas station and try and appeal to the people you see there um so it, it that is a challenge it it, it is there's yeah. so much psychology you don't <clears throat> the skillet to the head <laughs> right yeah. right there there's there's just so much that goes into that um people oftentimes aren't ready to change until they have reached that rock bottom you know and, and i mean i'm no exception to that rule either right that's that's just the way that it was um, but the fact of the matter is, I think that the people who do reach that rock bottom and do make those changes, that then makes it easier for the next generation because then that message is getting oh, yeah. relayed to that next generation much earlier in their life. And then and that the, cycle repeats. And I don't know if you've seen this, Chuck, but what we see this time and again is that people change, but they say, oh, you know, my husband isn't doing it or my wife isn't doing it or I'm alone doing it people just it's they have to realize that everybody is looking at you and nobody is going to forget they may not change right now but they may very well down the line when what suddenly their doctor says hey you know your cholesterol is high you need statins and they suddenly realize oh i have another thought of something i could do mm -hmm. so people uh, people are people are looking always 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 
Um, final question for you is this. In the book, uh, you write about always feeling like uh, you were behind the curtain, you know, um, but with this project, uh, it really is empowering, not just for the readers, but perhaps for you as well, I would assume, because you two are stepping toward the front. This is your time to shine. This is your stage, and the spotlight is bright. How empowering is this project for you? I like being behind the curtain, but occasionally peeking out and saying, eat this potato skin. Check <laughs> right. these screens, read your labels. All your things. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but um, I do know that like my mom and I have been working with like my dad and heart disease patients and my brother Rip and sort of firefighter uh, vibe, if you will. But this is truly us. Well, um, being also, us, I, I, I don't feel like I was having, having to hide well, behind she, something. She, no, but Jane um, started, and so we do a YouTube thing. We started a YouTube channel. Well, yes, but it was your idea. <laughs> it was. Both of you two uh, are, are just stars. And I mean this with the utmost sincerity. I'm talking to you, Amazon. I'm talking to you, Netflix. I'm talking to you, Hulu, and every other network out there. This is reality gold, my friends. This well, no, is reality have, gold. We have, our own, we have our own YouTube channel, which is our own. Um, and it's, I don't know if you've ever seen it, Chuck, but it's, um, we have, we do, we have 175 videos what what is real i think what it was is really helpful in that and especially for instance for if you're eating plant perfect how do you cook an onion without oil we show you how you do it i mean uh, but then also more complicated things that are yeah i mean like crazy chili things. lasagna everything buffalo cauliflower wings blah blah blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll just you know good good Perfect. stuff salad dressings hummus is desserts Yes. Chocolate cake is amazing frosting. Many dessert. Is the chocolate, uh, is uh, is there we, a favorite dessert that you have? And we have kale cake. We have yes. kale cake with blueberry frosting, which is awesome. Kale cake. But you know what? It sounds like we eat a lot of desserts, but we don't, you know, keep them, keep them occasional and delicious. Yeah, they're celebratory. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you guys are just the absolute best. I mean, the ticket, as we would say here in the South. And so uh, it has just been a joy to speak with you. Um, I will be rocking the Kuva shirt with pride and absolutely uh, get this book, Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior. There's a link to it in the show description and in the episode notes. So uh, you two are just the absolute best. Anytime you wish to come back and continue the reality show, you are more than welcome to do so. And there's also a link to your YouTube channel as well in the show description and the episode notes. Thank you both so very much for being here. Chuck, you've been terrific. And clearly you did your research and you looked at the book before and that's wonderful. Yeah. You're a great Thank interviewer. You. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Thank, Thank you both. Thank you. If your health IQ is a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.